Hello everybody and welcome to the craft room with Tanya. Um, I'm going to do a wee mixed media card. Um, other than clean and simple, I have to say mixed media is one of my favourite cards. Um, I made this little one earlier on. Um, it was a bit of a rush job. and um, But it's just to give you a general idea of the kind of thing I'm going for. Now, whether or not it turns out like that is anybody's guess because with mixed media anything can happen and that's I think what I love about it the most no matter I think even if you really tried hard you wouldn't get two cards the same and, and that's the joy of it I, I absolutely love it I have to be honest so um, I have an ordinary piece of cardstock I have my trusty smoocher which is just a bit of plastic it's actually the plastic that comes with your stamps you know the bit off I peeled one end off and kept it <coughs> I do beg your pardon I have um, an absolute brute of a head cold and I'm running a bit of a temperature as well so <laughs> a lovely lady was saying um, sent me a message asking me would I, you know, I had been, I had started a story about distress things and she had said, um, I look forward to hearing the end of it. I, I haven't a clue what I was talking about. Not one clue. Um, so I have to go back over and watch my own videos to find out what it was. It's so funny because you just lose your train of thought. You get distracted and it's so easy to do. For me, anyway, I have the attention span of a gnat. Um, okay, let's get going because this is going to be an in-depth video there's a lot of things to get done I'm gonna roll the sleeves up a bit and me gabbing away is not going to help right so what I want to do is I want to start off where's my spritzer bottle here it is I want to start off by soaking my card not soaking um spritzing my card and but giving it plenty of cover so I'm just going to do that off camera and I'm just giving it a good spray as you can see <clears throat> Because when I put the, the colours down, I want them to go all over. Now, I'm not using my smoochery just yet, but I am using a little bit of barn door. These are all distress oxides. Um, plenty of salvaged patina. There we go. Um, some carved pumpkin. I'm just putting these all down on the, the mat or the, you know, the glass mat, plate, whatever you like to call it. And a bit of, there we go, I'll give it a bit of vintage photo. I actually might use more vintage photo than that. I'm also going to spritz where I have painted because I want to cover this really well. It's a wee bit too much red in that for me. Bear with me. Just take a bit of that red out and put a wee bit more of my brown in. It's just a wee tiny hair too much, I think. <laughs> excuse me there we go so let's get plenty of color covering this card yeah need a bit more salvage patina in there um let's see now oh that's a bit mucky right i don't want it too mucky now i'm getting there i'm getting there so i'm going to take that all off There we go. <laughs> you see the way it's getting a wee bit mucky around the edges. So what I'm going to do, to prevent it getting any muckier, I'm just going to dab it. <clears throat> I'm going to put my salvage patina onto my smoocher because I haven't got much of that colour in it. Do you see that? It's just gone a bit brown. Um, I wonder should I put a wee tiny bit of the orange in as well. I think I will. It's just, I know what colours I want on this. Now, let's see. Oh, that's better. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. That's much better. Good, good. I'm a lot happier with that. Good, 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 good. Now, I still have a few white bits. Um, so, a little bit more. A little bit more of that, a little bit more of my orangey colour, which is carved. I'm using carved pumpkin, 
salvaged patina, barn door and gathered, sorry, vintage photo. So we smooch off our we spritz of water. And all I want to do is get these bits in here that are still white, as much covered as I possibly can. Right, I think that'll do. Okay, just clean this all up and I want to clean my smoocher up as well. There we go. Let's make sure I have that all well and truly clean now. <coughs> Excuse me, I do apologise. Do you know, somebody, I'm just going to give this um, a blast with the, the um, heat gun to dry it. So forgive the noise. <coughs> somebody was... Oh, I'll talk when this is over. Here we go. relatively dry. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my stencils and do a little bit of mixed media. Now I need to make sure this is dry. I'll set these over here for the moment because I'm not, I will be using some of those later on but not now. Can everybody see that okay? i just position that that you can. Um, I've lost my sticky mat. I think it's fallen down behind the desk. So I'm going to try to stick. This is just sticks to low tack. <laughs> oh, it's not working. Oh, I've lost my sticky mat, which I always stick down first. This is in, this is just not going to stick for me, but there we go. It's low tack tape, so what do you expect? But I want to try... Um, to get a little bit of this, I want to get a little tiny bit of this um, over this side. Not too much now. What do I say? Maybe like that. That looks good. Right. So I'll. I don't want to cover that wee bit up, but I will cover that, and I will cover this. Now, what I'm going to do is a bit of um, dimensional paste. I'm going to put on this. Okay. Now, I have made some of my own here and it's black. I'm going to use my own. And I'm also using the Sizzix Dimensional Paste. Now, this is obviously a big tub of white. And this is my very own tub of black. Um, it is so easy to make. Right, let me see. I want, where's my spatula? This one will do lovely. Right, so what I want to do is just put a little bit of this down and smear it very carefully. I don't want too much on. Bear with me a second, I just need a tad more there. I don't want too much, but enough to give me some shape. And there we go, that should be us with a bit of luck. They tell you not to go over this too many times. Um, you know, too many passes back and forward when you're doing your um, dimensional paste because uh, it can seep, you can push it in and around your stencil, which is what you're trying to avoid. But don't worry, if that happens, there's always a way to fix it. Right, tops back on. <coughs> Excuse me, palette knife. Right, I'm going to have to take this bit off first and get that in the bin before it contaminates everything. And then this little bit off. Get that in the bin. Hey ho! Ho ho ho! That was close, wasn't it? And there we go. That's isn't that perfect? I'm very pleased with that. Now I haven't. I don't know why I'm taking all my tape off just to clean up. Um, I think. Yep, like that. There we go. And then I want to clean this um, 
you can the best thing to do is get this straight into something oh cheaper so um, don't do what I just did and fling it on the carpet um, get it into soapy water as quick as you can um, I know some people keep a wee basin beside them when they're doing this um, of course I'm not well organised I haven't bothered so I'm just cleaning it up as best I can with a baby wipe and then obviously once I've finished here with the video I'll go and um, do them properly with the um, soapy water just to make sure there's absolutely no residue left let me give that away dry good job good job that's one part done now that's my black dimensional paste now what I want I want to give this a wee blast again with the heat gun so forgive the racket Well, I hate the way you lose all your nice shine when you do that. Sad. Right, let's get this back down. Now, I don't want to stick that over just in case it's not completely dry. What I'm going to do now is I want to get some of these. I have a wee postmark and, and letters. And I want to get some of these postmarks in. Preferably, I like this one here. So I have to put it this way. I think that's dry. Um, I want it like, do I want it at the bottom? I think I want it, I want it over a bit because I'm aware that there's a frame going to go on here. Um, do you know what? I'll maybe just use this, this one here. Yeah, I'll do, that's exactly what I'll do. Okay, change of plan. Now, I'm just going to position this bit of tape to keep it as much as I can in the right spot now I don't want this a plaster everywhere so what I'm going to do is tape off where I don't want it to go um, like that I don't want it really going let me see yeah to there I don't mind that, do I? Do I want a wee bit more? Maybe I do, you know. Ah, we'll give it. Give it a welly. Why not? <coughs> Oops. Forgot about that bit. No, do you know what? I don't. I don't want it going that far down because I have a stamp to go on. So I'm going to keep this quite frugal. Okay. This is the Sizzix Dimensional. There's no difference. Absolutely no difference in my book anyway. Okay. And all I'm doing is spreading, oops, this over like so, just to give me that little bit of shape and dimension. And that's it. And then you know what to do next. Clean up quickly because you do not want this stuff sticking to anything because it's like super glue. It's, it's, it's like concrete. It's the devil's own to get off. There we go. I'm just cleaning round my jar. And then when I put the lid on, I clean round it again. And that way, it makes it nice and easy to get off the next time you use it. And that is what it is all about. There we go. Right. I think that's me done with the low tack tape. Let's get this all off. And then we'll start the process of cleaning this one up. Oh, that's, do you know what? I'm not happy with that because that's, no, it's so good. That's okay. I think I smudged it a bit there, but again, it doesn't matter. Don't worry. Um, All will be revealed and fixed. Now, let me get that dimensional paste off everything. It's great stuff. forceful there wouldn't be like me would it there we go that's us we'll put that out of the road and that and there we go now I've got some nice colours 
Um, again, I'm just going to run the heat gun over this. Um, If you're wondering why I do the back as well as the front, it's very, very simple. Um, I um, it, it stops the card from buckling as much. Now, I'm going to use two colours. Where's my walnut stain? There we go. So I'm continuing with my vintage photo and I'm just going to mark up this beautiful indigo, indigo blue um, stamp. Now, this one is called an enemy I think it is I'm, I want the, the center of it a little bit darker so I'm going in here with a bit of my um, walnut stain and you don't have to worry too much because we we'll probably end up covering half of this up so then I don't want to get the edges on it if I can help it I probably will I will you know so it doesn't matter just go down um what was this saying oh it's gone I, I like I like these big stamps. Oh, I know what I was going to say to you. This is this is an anemone. Look at that! Isn't that glorious? Love it. Now it's went over um, some of the black. It's went over some of the white. That's absolutely fine. I knew it was going to do that, and I'm not concerned. Um, right, I'm going to finish saying what I was going to say before I forget again. Um, you don't have to use an anemone stamp you can use cogs you can use wheels you can use clocks you can use whatever you want now I'm going to finish up this one with my little um I guess done with my little uh what do you call it dragonfly there's the word I was looking for get there eventually um I love uh the dragonflies and I love butterflies and I love flowers um right i have got this one already and i forgot so i'll finish up with a little bit of dragonfly i wonder should i put this on first yes i think i will i think i will can't remember what i did last time but it doesn't matter now this is just like a little um bit of stitching uh i got a set um, I have no idea who it was from, but it's got tape measures on it and different rows of stitching. I'm sorry, I don't know who made that. or I know I got it off eBay, but I don't know who manufactured it, unfortunately. What way do I want this to go? Actually, I think I'll put it like that. Yep, that works for me. And I'm going to do this one at a slight angle. There we go. Oh, I like that. Yes, I do. That's plenty. I just used Versafine Claire on that black ink. Um, you could have used your Distress Oxide ink, but that was just handy for me. Uh, no other special reason for it, other than it was handy. So um, you could use whatever black comes to comes to hand. Um, you could use a, a dark grey. Again, there's no rules with this. It's entirely up to you. And it's half the fun of it, isn't it? All right, put that back over there and put that away. I don't think I need that again. Just make sure of everything clean and dry. Now, there we go. Now, what I'm going to do now is I am going to get my good old trusted luster wax. And I'm going to get my um, rose gold. I'm going to get my one finger if I can. That's the wrong one. Oh, to pot with it. Let's go for another finger here. We'll go for the thumb. That'll do just as well. There we go. I'll keep you waiting. Now, I can afford to be quite liberal with this stuff. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to even things up here with my... Now, I don't want to cover the black necessarily completely, but I do want to cover it enough that... You're wondering what it is. And I'm going to do the same with most of the white. And then anywhere 
that I think is too pale, like these outside bits. I'm going to um, bring this metallic-y, coppery effect with the rose gold in. Do you see that? But not too much. I think that's I think that's possibly loads. I, I'm not I'm not happy with this wee sort of bit here, so I'm just going to bring in a bit more round there, and I'm not happy with that. I don't like finger marks sitting, so I'm just going to soften that out a bit. There we go. I think that will do lovely. Yep, I do. Now we'll come back to that. Oops, and the gold later on. That's just the Sizzix luster wax rose gold that I have added in there that's all that is um sorry I need to give this a good clean because the last thing you want is to get this stuff all over your card base and your bits and pieces right that's that that's that I did wipe that didn't I now look at that do you see that do you see where we have a lovely sheen off that you see it's really really pretty um and it's that lovely patinaed effect um, you're getting a little bit of the, the blue now. What I want to do next is a little bit of splattering. So I'm going to get my good old faithful splatter box out. And there we go. Can you all see in there okay? I'm going to put my card down or my card base or whatever you like to call it. And I have a Distress Oxide Mica Spray. This is brushed pewter. And this one is um, antique bronze. So I'm going to use these two. Give them a good old shake to get that mica activated. And then these will just bring up a wee shine. I'm not going to put too much on. Right. I'm actually going to go with the pewter first to see how it looks. Isn't that pewter? Yes, brushed pewter. Uh, oh, look at that. Oh, I love that. Do you see that? See, it's just giving that all a lovely... Oh, that's perfect. I'm actually going to go in a wee bit close in places, do you see? Look. Um, oh, sorry, I just hit the camera there. I do beg your pardon. And then I'm going to dab off. Not all of it. Certainly not all of it. And I'm going to dry that quickly while I still have it there. I know that has worked a little bit, but when I turn it over, I'm smudging stuff. So um, I hope that's more or less it. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm so pleased with that. Really, really chuffed. Can you see? Can you see the lovely shimmer off it? Isn't it glorious? So there we go. That's us. I think that's our base pretty much done. Um, excuse me a second. Now, what I'm going to do next is my wings. So I'm going to take another bit of card. I'm going to do my, sorry, my wings. Where did I put my dies? No, I'm going to get my, here we go. Come on, out we come. Should have had that ready. Silly sausage, right. What I want to do is a similar effect to the base that I had on this. And I don't want to mess with it too much. So I'm afraid we're going to have to do this all over again. But sure, isn't it great? Because I think it's probably my favourite bit. I'm going to use a good wee bit of that orange. I don't want too much of this red. Very, very little of that. And the vintage photo. Now... 
I'm going to do what I did before and I'm going to spritz the card and then spritz. And that, that way it, it just all moves so much easier for me. Yep, like that. Let's see. The last thing I want is it becoming one hot mess. Um, oh dear, dear. There we go. So again, just lift a bit here and there. Get my smoocher. Where did I put the smoocher? There it is. And I want to bring in plenty of that. And you're not really seeing a lot of the orange in it, actually you're not, so I'm going to bring plenty of that in too. The orange I'm using, by the way, is carved pumpkin, as well as the salvaged patina. Oh, that's much, much nicer. Yeah, yeah. Happy with that. That's perfect. Okay, clean it up a bit. I'll get the rest of that later. Now, again, I need to dry it. Great. Now what I want to do next is I want to get back my anemone stamp from Indigo Blue and I want to put, um, I'm going to use the walnut stain on this one. <laughs> Whoopsie daisy. And I'm just going to stamp it right there across the blue I think. Oh, I think I moved that again. Doesn't matter. Hopefully I didn't because that would be disappointing. But it really doesn't matter. With mixed media, anything goes. So don't get too wound up if something doesn't go right. Um, and use what you have available to you, you know. Oh, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? It's a lovely, lovely stamp, isn't it? Um, it's a shame that it's dead square. It's, but then it is what it is um, it's a terrific one for um, an, you know if you're doing an embossed resist uh, or something like that it's, it's a fantastic stamp I like it a lot right there we go as it cleaned up just pop it to the side now again I'm going to dry this off Um, do you know, I'm wondering, do I want to put a wee bit of emboss on that? Bear with me a sec. I have, um, a little t tin here or, or pot. I think they're specimen jars. I ward and everything on them. <laughs> See where I spend my time. Ooh, the joys, eh? I've made this up from, um, uh, mustard embossing powder and a little bit of copper embossing powder um, and I think I think I might have thrown in a tad of gold in that which I shouldn't have bothered doing but I get carried away so what I'm going to do is stamp uh, I don't know if I should I shouldn't have dried that actually um do I want to do I want to do a little bit of versa mark yeah come on let's live dangerously huh very quickly because I know I tried to time this video. Where is it? There's a little bit there. Let's just see. I wonder, I wonder if it would be better using the pen. Where's the pen? There it is. Okay. Come out. Come out. There we go. Oh, jeepers. The whole drawer has come out. Right, I'll just set that out of the road. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit more copper into this. There we go. And give it a little mix. Um, it's as simple as that and all I'm going to do is go over a few of these strokes nothing too elaborate um, and I'm not even sure if I'm going to see all of these and then I'm just going to dot in the centre a little bit and that's it because perfect Okay, let's 
get this back in the pot. Yep, I'm happy with that. Because I'll not be using all of it anyway. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Right, heat gun again. Oh, I need to hurry up. Ooh. 